The Mark of the Beast. Many have attempted to explain what this is or will be. A microchip? A vaccine? A world currency? A bailout fund with an oath attached to it? Or many other definitions. But to be honest, the best way to avoid the Mark of the Beast is to carry the Mark of the Most High. No need for fancy explanations. Wouldn't you think that all the answers to this mystery would be contained within his word? No need for explaining what this person has done or what that government is doing or planning. While I agree that we shouldn't get chipped, take a vaccine, or swear any oath, especially to receive compensation, let's not get carried away by every wind of doctrine. Let's see what the word says, for after all, I do not believe our bodies, the temple of the Most High, can carry two different marks. Which will yours carry? The mark of the beast, or the mark of Yahuwah Sebaoth, creator of heaven and earth and everything contained within? Join us as we explore the scriptures and see how we can avoid the mark of the beast in these last days. Let's begin in Deuteronomy 6. And you shall love Yahuwah with all of your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart, and you shall teach them diligently unto your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And ye shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. We see the hand and the forehead, just like we see with the mark of the beast. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. It should be plain to see that we can be marked by Yah or by the beast. Let's take a look at a few more passages. For we know that all things must be established by two or three witnesses. The passage we are about to read is in regard to the Passover and the week of unleavened bread, which happens to be coming up very soon. Let's see what comes with the observance of these most set apart days. Matzah, unleavened bread, shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no chametz be seen with you, neither shall there be leaven seen with you in all your quarters. And you shall show your son in that day, saying, This is done because of that which Yahuwah did unto me when I came forth out of Mitzrayim, Egypt. And it shall be for a sign unto you upon your hand, and for a memorial between your eyes, that Yahuwah's Torah may be in your mouth. For with a strong hand has Yahuwah brought you out out of Mitzrayim, Egypt. Once again we see the hand and the forehead, the same as we saw in Deuteronomy and in Revelation. The command here is to celebrate the Passover, to which we will be doing at sunset on April 8th, and the week-long festival of unleavened bread, which we will be celebrating until the evening of the 15th. It is a time to throw out all yeast and other leavening substances alongside eating no leavened breads. It's a foreshadow of the true bread from heaven coming down, our Savior Yahusha, living a sinless and spotless life, just like the spotless lamb. And a reminder for us to remove the leaven of man-made teaching from our lives, as well as removing sin through the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, commonly known as the Holy Spirit. Something interesting to note, in Revelation 18.4, we see a call to Yahuwah's people that ties into this. 
And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Just as the Israelites were protected from the plagues in Egypt thousands of years ago by keeping Yahweh's commands, wouldn't it make sense for the same to apply to us today? Brothers and sisters, it is time to come out of the pagan ways, Sunday worship, Christmas, Easter, and the many others, in favor for Yahuwah's ways, the true Saturday Sabbath, His feast days, and many other blessings along His path of righteousness, which carry His protection. Let's look at another witness. Wherefore the children of Yashrael shall guard the Sabbath and do the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Yashrael forever. For in six days Yahuwah made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. How can we define this sign the Sabbath brings between us and Yahuwah? Let's take a look at the many ways this Hebrew word oath was used. It is a sign or a signal, a distinguishing mark. It's also certainly interesting that the Catholic Church is on record multiple times that they officially changed the day of Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. Let's take a look at this from another perspective. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And Yahuwah said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, that's Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city, and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have you pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. I must ask, do you sigh and weep for all the abominations done in this land, wherever you're living? Do you care that nearly this entire world has gone astray, gone a-whoring after the devil and his ways? What about the nearly two billion professing Christians who could care less about the commandments of Yahuwah, keeping for themselves the doctrines of men? If you do, good, you're on the right path. If you can care less, it may be time to rethink some things, as per our scriptural example from Ezekiel 9. Let's take one more look at this mark from the beast. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. A few interesting points. What are we not to do on the Sabbath besides no work? Buy or sell? What do the scriptures say we are to buy and sell? Proverbs 23, 23 states, Buy the truth and sell it not. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding. Speaking of buying the truth, what is the truth according to the scriptures? Psalm 119, 142 states, Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and your Torah is the truth.
He that dwells in the secret place of El Elyon shall abide under the shadow of El Shaddai. I will say of Yahuwah, He is my refuge and my fortress. My Elohim, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made Yahuwah, which is my refuge, even El Elyon, your habitation. There shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you, to guard you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall you trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my Yeshua. It must also be noted that we saw the Mark of the Beast also carried a name. Instead of focusing on that, I want to turn our attention to the sealed and preserved 144,000 who were taken from tribulation alongside the great multitude, to whom I believe to be the wise virgins that were ready. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him an 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. I believe his name in our foreheads is twofold. First and foremost, by keeping his ways are we honoring his name, and by forsaking his ways we dishonor his name. Secondly, we know that the world was created and spoken into existence through our Messiah. So words do matter. And Yahusha plainly stated that we would be judged even by every idle word. Our Father and His Son's names have been hidden for centuries, but just like many other truths are being revealed in these last days, so the same is true for their names. Yahuwah, our Father. Yahusha, the Son of Elohim. Yes, I believe their names matter. Then they that feared Yahuwah spoke often one to another, and Yahuwah hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared Yahuwah and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith Yahuwah Sebaoth, in the day when I make up my jewels and I will spare them, as a man spares his own son that serves him. There's even more to this, but I wanted to keep this short and concise. This information should be sufficient enough to fear Yahuwah alone and to keep his ways, you children of Yah. There very well may be something coming that we must take in order to continue to participate in commerce, that is, buying and selling, and we definitely should not take it. But I truly believe if we focus on his mark, we will have nothing to worry about. For if we walk in his ways with a true and circumcised heart, he will give us a sound mind and guidance from his spirit within us to let us know what to do and when. This is what the entire scriptures have always taught. Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in Yahuwah and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? For Yahuwah is full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering and very pitiful, and forgives sins and saves in times of affliction. Woe be to the fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that goes two ways. 
He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his Elohim, and he shall be my son. But to the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. No fear whatsoever, brothers and sisters, regardless of what the media is selling you today. Fear is to Yahweh alone. Let the many perish who are now living, rather than the Torah of Elohim which is set before them be disregarded. For Elohim strictly commanded those who came into the world when they came what they should do to live, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. Nevertheless, they were not obedient, and spoke against him. They devised for themselves vain thoughts, and proposed to themselves wicked frauds. They even declared that the Most High does not exist, and they ignored his ways. They scorned his Torah, and denied his covenants. They have been unfaithful to his statutes, and have not performed his works. Therefore, Ezra, empty things are for the empty, and full things are for the full. Brothers and sisters, choose for yourself life that you may live, that you may avoid the mark of the beast and abide in belief in Yahuwah's true son, Yahusha, and walk as he walked according to the Torah, and avoid the mark of the beast as we are called to. Hallelujah, and all praise, honor, and esteem goes to Yahuwah through his son, Yahusha. Yahuwah bless you and keep you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.